Hello, hello, guys. Good evening. Can you listen to me? Hey, Dean. Julio. Hello, teacher. Hey, good evening. Are, good evening. How are you doing? Fine, teacher. No, good to see you. Good to see you too, Julio. Okay, welcome. Uh, today is Thursday. Is our last class of this week, and we are starting a new section which we couldn't, which we haven't finished yet. And today we're going to go over a class we left pending yesterday. Welcome, Milton. I know you're there. Thank you so much for turning on your cameras. Thank you, hum thank you so much, Julio. Now I can see. You. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Heidi is hiding herself. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> All right. So welcome. Thank you so much for being connected on time. We're going to start with our class. It's 8.01 already. Okay. So what about the platform? Have you worked on the exercises there? Are you working on that? Are you up to date? Yes, that's true. Yeah. I, I, actually, uh, I was finished the section four. Okay, that's really cool. You finished already while we are studying. Awesome. <laughs> so you finished a topic which um, I think I haven't explained yet. There are some things that, that I haven't explained, but if you feel like um, you know solving all these exercises, it's totally fine. That's perfectly fine. You can go you know and anticipate whatever is coming if you have questions specifically maybe uh, you can go ahead and ask today we're going to study adjectives and also modal verbs and adverbs okay so let me start with the with the first topic which mm -hmm. is adjectives i'm going to share my screen right now so welcome i think nuvia is just joining the class so this is sec session number 10, you see? So that means that we have already exceeded, you know, the 50% of the classes because this course contains 16 classes. So this is session number 10. And like I said, this is, um, today is adjectives and modal verb. This is uh, the first image that I wanted to display. I showed this yesterday. And there were some things that I wanted to go over today. So I need one volunteer to help me reading these sentences. Would you like to try, Julio, with the first one, please? Okay. He's beating his nails. Thank you so much. And when do you bite your nails, Julio? Do you do this? Do you bite your nails or not? You don't have no. that. No. <laughs> If you, no, you don't do it. And if you had to choose one adjective to describe uh, this action, which one would it be from these ones? Which adjective do you think best describe biting, you know? I, I think nervous. Nervous? Okay. Nervous. nervous. This, is, this is the one. You said that when you bite your nails is because you are nervous, okay. Mm -hmm. Is there any other adjective that you consider can describe this action from these uh, adjectives? Yes. Um, confused, teacher? Mm -hmm. Confused? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe. What mm -hmm. else? Bored, maybe? Bored? Okay, I think, well, in my opinion, it's disgusting with ING. <laughs> when you buy your nails, that's really, you know, disgusting. You're not supposed to be biting your nails, right? Okay, okay, but that's just perception. And I heard Heidi said that is, you know, confused. So it might be, right? What about number two? Welcome, Blanca. Blanca, can you help us with number two? Okay, he's rolling his eyes. Okay, do you do this, Blanca, or you don't do this? And maybe mm. it's a little C. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's the letter C, yes. And do you yourself do this? Do you roll your eyes? If you mm. 
Well, maybe when I think, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I need time for remember, remember or uh, think, um, I don't know, the, I think my answers. Okay, that's a good point. So whenever you need some time to think about what to answer, you start rolling your eyes. Makes makes a lot of sense. Man. Thank you so much. Okay. What about next one? Let me ask Heidi. Heidi, can you please read number three for us? Okay. Okay. He's stretching his his head. Okay. Do you scratch your head, Heidi? Does this happen to you? A stretch teacher is this. Scratch when you know some something <laughs> okay. like you do this scratching like you scratch it, it means like I think it's rascar or something like that. You, you scratch your, your head. Do you do that? Yes, teacher. That is, when do you do it? Maybe frustrate. Okay, so when you are frustrated, we have it here, right? When you are frustrated, okay. Yes. When you are frustrated, it can be one. And is there any other adjective from this list that you would say describe this? The confused oh, yes. Confused. Okay. Maybe confused, right? Or maybe impatient. Yes. Like, come on, I explained this to you already, and you start doing this. <laughs> You don't understand what I'm saying. Come on, maybe. And what about uh, next one, number four? Let's go over this one. Let me ask one other uh, person. Maybe Alex, would you like to try with number four? Okay. He's taping his foot. He's a uh, letter E. Letter? Okay. Um, and tapping, tapping, like when you're tapping. It says letter E, okay. And do you tap your food? It's letter E, um, yes. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, in this case, it's um, nervous, nervous. Nervous, okay, maybe. When you are giving a presentation and you don't know what to say, you start tapping your food. Okay, maybe, it can, it can happen. Or maybe impatient, you want to leave the place, maybe. What about number five? I'm going to ask Nubia with number five. Read it, please. He's, he's trailing his hair. Okay, do uh, you do that, uh, Nubia? Letter, letter A. Letter okay. A. Uh, maybe he's... Uh, confused mm -hmm. okay okay so you oh, trail nervous. nervous it might be right different reactions okay this pronunciation is, is like an like this is like mm -hmm. an it sound like twirl twirl twirling Twir twirling exactly twirling twirling that's the action of like rolling your in this case, his hair or your hair. What about this one? Thank you, Nubi. What about this one, Elsie? Wrinkle or wrinkling? Can you read it? He's wrinkling his nose. Um, I think that is the letter B. Uh -huh. um, I think that is disgust disgusting <laughs> okay <laughs> when you do you wrinkle do you wrinkle like do you wrinkle your your nose yes do you do that <laughs> i think we all know we tend to do that maybe when i'm mm -hmm. angry. No, when i'm irritated uh, i think yeah. i when, never I, irritate. Man, I think irritated is I tend to do this when I'm maybe annoyed. And, yeah, maybe in my case. But it depends, right? Different reactions and gestures, okay? 
do you have any question in regards uh, of this vocabulary, guys, or can we continue? Any specific one that you might have a question? Annoyed, uh, teacher. Annoyed. An annoyed. Annoyed is when you are really angry. If you're oh, angry, yeah. it's because you're annoyed. If something is annoying, it's because it's bothering you, you are very frustrated, and then you are basically annoyed. It's like similar, like irritated, like very angry. You are annoyed. Or annoyed. annoyed. The, the annoyed. ED, the ED yeah. is D sound, annoyed with D. Annoyed. Bored, annoyed. bored with with um, D as uh, again or the same word, confused, confused, and then we have this gasted. We add the extra syllable. Embarrassed is T sound, and exhausted. We add the extra syllable. Frustrated. We add the extra syllable. Impatient. There's no ed. Irritated. We add extra syllables and nervous. So basically, in which in the ones we have the T, we add extra syllables. Irritated, frustrated, irritated, exhausted, exhausted, disgusted. So all of those ones which end with T before the ED is mandatory to add extra syllable when pronouncing. Remember that T T T T it 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 it. Disgusted, exhausted, frustrated, irritated, and there might be other ones, okay? All right, um, we need to move on. I remember somebody yesterday asked about modals and also adverbs. I would like to know if you, I know some of you already went over this topic and you might have a previous knowledge about this. And I would like you to explain to me if it's possible, if you know, what is a modal verse? What can you tell me about modal verse? Let me go to the next page. What is a modal verse? Look. Modal verse. Modal. Mo modal or modal? Don't say uh, this is not, it's not model. Models are the ones Model. Modeling like like famous people, models, like models. Model. In, this case, in this case, it's mo modal. Modal birds are like helping birds, modal birds, not models. Okay, don't confuse that because models are the famous people who act, who model in different scenarios and blah blah blah. But these are mo modal birds. So having said that, what is a modal bird? Can you help me, please, Nelsi? Can you read this line? Moral verbs express certain. <laughs> certain. Certainty. Certainty, ability, or obligation. Good. Thank you so much. We have certainty, ability. Or obligation. or obligation. What Let does me... mean certainty? And that is today's topic, okay? We are going to focus only in certainty. This is our, this is gonna be our friend. Why? Because we are going to use moral verse and also some adverbs that express certainty. It means how confident, how sure you are about something to happen. Let's say if we talk about degrees or we talk about percentage of probabilities, that is certainty. If something is likely to happen, if something might not happen, if something would never happen. So certainty is that, is how sure, how um, confident you are about something to really happen, so that's certainty. Now, in this list, guys, I have more than one moral verse. All of these ones you see on the screen, uh, for example, we have can, might, all, ought to, or must, may, 
and all the ones would, will, shall, and should, and could. All of these ones, guys, are considered verbs. Are considered modal verbs. All of them are modal verbs. Okay. Maybe or I'm sure you guys know about this. So, is it possible you guys can give me some examples with these words? I want to know if you can create any sentence with this uh, modal verse. How can you use them? Is there any you can use? You can park here, for example. Okay. You can park here, very good. This, he is using this one, right? And that is uh, expressing ability, right? Because you can do it, okay? What about uh, any other from this list? Give me sentences, please. Any other sentence that you can think about with any other, any of these models? You should cook today. You should, okay, you should cook, you should cook today. Okay, the dinner should. Okay, this is like more like a recommendation, right? Like an obligation in a way. Okay, should, that's a good example. What other example can you give me? One more, please. You should be is, is studying. You should be studying. You should be, you should be studying and, and not uh, playing. Exactly. We have to tell that to the to the teenagers. They love playing Free Fire and Among Us and other games, right? So you should be studying, not playing on the phone. Okay, I like it. As you can see, you are using some modal verbs in your sentences. And some of them express ability, obligation, or certainty. We are going to move on because I want to show you. Uh, maybe you want to screenshot this ones if you would like to. And let me move on, let me see. Okay, here we go. You run at your house because I, this is rain. You? You can say, run uh, your house because it's running. Okay, you can run, okay, to your house because it's raining. Yes, that's a good one. You can no, run to your house, it's raining. Actually, today it rained, right, for a, for a little bit. I don't know if, if where you are, it rained, but here where I am, it rained for a couple of minutes. So look at this one. This is what I want to uh, make kind of like, uh, use both. I want to use models and I want to use adverbs to express certainty. And what is certainty? We have said is how probable something or how likely is something to happen. Okay. So take a look at this. All of these ones, guys, are adverbs. Okay. And adverbs, we have different types. Okay. We have adverbs of frequency, like always, uh, sometimes, and blah, blah, blah. We also have adverbs of time, adverbs of, of place, and so on. Now, uh, these ones are adverbs, and all of these ones are adverbs of certainty. Okay. Because they are describing uh, how possible something is to happen. So, what about if you guys help me? classifying these, uh, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, seven uh, adverbs here in these um, categories, less certain and certain. Where would you place any of these? Where do you think uh, certainly is placed? If we have to place them in less certain, in the middle or certain, we have three Certain. Okay, so do me a favor. I'm going to give you two minutes. Write these adverbs because they are going to help us with the next exercises. So you can start classifying where this is. How likely is something to happen? Where do you place it? So only use only use the, these categories. Only use a less certain. Use in the middle and use certain. Okay. And then make maybe the columns right here. Three columns with these seven adverbs. Classify them, please. Two minutes. Go ahead, please. 
teacher, I have a question. Mm -hmm. the, seven, the, the seven adverbs, um, only five. All of them, all of them, classify oh. them, right. Okay. Like uh, only use these three apps, let's say, only tell me which one you think is uh, under the category less certain, which one is under the category certain, and which one do you think is in the middle from mm -hmm. this? Only three categories. Let's use only these three options here. Okay, let's start working on this together because time really flies and I really want to uh, go over this topic. Let's see, Julio, which from these seven albums do you place under less certain? Which one do you have on this category? Only one. Uh, which one maybe. is it? Maybe. Maybe? Okay. Yep. All right, let me delete all this. So Julio says that maybe is on this category, less certain, okay? Let me ask Impossible? Blanca. Impossible? Which I'm one? Sorry. No, it's okay. Possible? Possi possibly this one? Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm going to do as you say, and then we're gonna check. Possibly less certain, okay? Good. Is there any other that goes under less certain to, to happen? Yeah. Perhaps. Perhaps, okay. So we have this other one, perhaps. Never. Okay. And you are saying never. When you say never. never, okay. Certainty, never. Hmm, okay, interesting. What about certain? Surely. 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 Surely, certainly, definitely, definitely, okay, definitely, very good. Like that, none of this is in the middle, nothing here. Um, I, I place perhaps in the middle, perhaps in the middle, okay. Is there any other opinion? Maybe. Maybe. Hmm. Okay, we have two opinions. So perhaps and maybe you want to place it in the middle. Okay, let's take a look at the answers. And you might say, why? And let's take a look at this one. <laughs> okay, look. Oops, oops. This one. <laughs> maybe, possibly. Yeah, yeah, you would write here, perhaps, maybe, and possibly, less certain. Yeah, you're not sure. Surely it's in the middle. And never, why is it never yeah. certain? Because when you say never, is zero probabilities. You say never, okay? Yeah. So that's certain, okay? It's like you say, but how can that be there? Because you are sure it's not going to happen. It's certainty, but zero certainty okay you're not doubting okay there's no doubt basically certainty it can be the other way around in this scenario that is why never is placed there because when you say never your confidence that is not going to happen so that's why we that's why we place it here all right so that's the way we want to place it perhaps maybe possibly surely like in the middle of certainty and then we have certain, never, definitely, and certainly. 
Okay, maybe you want to double check, you want to write it down because we are going to create sentences with these ones. Okay, I'm going to give you two minutes and write it down, please. Okay, time is up. Okay, before I share with you guys some examples, I know you already have an idea of these adverbs, perhaps, maybe, or maybe you already use them when you're speaking. Would you be so kind as to give me one example of each? Take turns. Let's ask Milton. Milton, can you try to use perhaps this one? In, uh -huh. in, a, in a sentence, uh -huh. um, I have a, a surreally teacher. Perhaps uh, mm -hmm. um, um, perhaps uh, I will be I I will be I'll be back the next year. I'm not sure. Okay, I like it how you're using it. What about this one, Julio? What about the next one? Can you give me a sentence, maybe? Sure. Mm -hmm. Maybe tomorrow I will, tomorrow I will work. <laughs> okay, you know, I, I, like, I like what you guys are saying. As you can see class, Milton and Julio have used these two adverbs at the beginning of the sentence. Okay. Uh, hey. So they said, perhaps I will, maybe tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. So they use it at the beginning of the sentence, which is really cool. Let's leave it like that. I'm going to give you some, some examples later on. So, or maybe the question would be, can we use perhaps at the end of the sentence? Or can we use perhaps, or maybe in the middle or only at the beginning? Okay. So that can be something that we can also investigate, right? I'm going to give you some details in the next uh, slides. But as of now, I like what you said because it's strongly recommended to use them at the beginning of the sentence. That's why I like both examples already mentioned by Julio and Milton. What about possibly? Is there any volunteer to provide any example with possibly? My example, teacher. Mm -hmm. Uh, I am I am finished by homework, uh, but possibility possibility I have a mistake in one or two questions. Possibly I have one. okay. You give me a long long sentence and you you leave it in like in the middle of your sentence. Okay, possibly I will. Okay, okay. That that can be one example. Is there any other idea that you can? you know, think about and provide it, please. 
Me uh, with never. And what about with possibly? <clears throat> Teacher, hmm? in, in I possibly adopt a cat. You possibly adopt a cat. Okay, so you're saying it just before the main verb. Okay, good. It's understandable. It's clear. Good. What about these Teacher, other ones? Uh huh. The possibility the is, for example, is if I am fini I finish my course, my English course. A possible I. I bear my in my work. Okay. Possibly well, what do you say next? I'm sorry. I possibly uh, I better uh -huh. better in my work, my position in my work. Oh, okay, I got it. But you will you will be promoted into a higher position or you will be in a better position. Or you will okay. okay. All right, yeah, I see better. I see what you're saying. Okay. Uh, I want to move on because I want to I want to show you the structure of how it is recommended to 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 use these adverbs and also the modal verbs. Let's take a look at this one, please. Look, how can we use it, and how is it that it, that adverbs work? Adverbs of certainty usually go before the main verb. That is essential. I heard some of you saying it. Uh, just before the main verb, as uh, who said about the cat? Possibly adopt a cat. That was the perfect example because it's highly, like, strongly recommended to use any adverb of certainty before the verb. You see, before the main verb. For example, you certainly need to be dedicated to become a painter. Okay, before the main verb, look at this one. We will definitely admire your art before the verb, admire, okay? Take a look at this one. Uh, but this is important. Some adverbs of certainty can go at the beginning. And this is exactly what Milton and Julio did. Maybe at the beginning and perhaps at the beginning, okay, of the sentence, okay? That's exactly what, what that's recommended, okay? Now that I have said that, I want you to give me one example using this, this one, this structure before the main verb and at the beginning of the sentence. Do me a favor. I give you two minutes, create one example with this option and one example with these uh, two options. You choose which Albert you want to use. Two minutes, think about it please and share it with the class. I would like everybody to participate, okay, with these uh, structures. So maybe you want to send it on the chat or open your mic and speak whenever you have one ready.
Okay. Let's take one more minute to finish your idea, please. Maybe you will finish your homework. You will finish? Your homework. You will finish your homework. It's okay. But you need to include one adverb of certainty. You will finish, but then we have to place one adverb before the main verb, which is finish. Which adverb do you want to place before finish? My bet you will to finish to hunger. Now you are talking. Maybe you will finish Maybe. your homework. Exactly. Oh, you just gave me an example from the second one here, from this one and this one. What about with this option, the one, this one? Without Is using, uh-huh, maybe. Go ahead, please. Maybe I buy some book. Maybe I buy some books. Yes, that is simple present and is maybe at the beginning of the sentence. Okay, good. What about the other ones? Certainly, definitely, possibly, and all those ones we already mentioned. The selector I... won't definitely go to World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> for selector, right? That's a good example and that's for real. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely, I... right? I will. I feel straight. <laughs> You're, you're frustrated? Why? <laughs> select the, the oh, select. yeah, of course. And that's so disappointing, <laughs> right? You expect, you expect more from the soccer national team. Because as you remember, they scored in the, I think, the 11 second, they scored, right? Then nothing more, you know, I was so sad. <laughs> But that's how our country is, especially our soccer team in El Salvador. <laughs> okay, good. Is there any other example you want to share with this? They certainly played in bats. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> example, we will definitely uh, evol uh, evolution in soccer in we will, El Salvador. We will definitely... Definitely oh. evolution and soccer in the Salvador. What is the verb for evolution? What is the verb? Because after uh, we will definitely, and then we need the verb. What is the verb of, we don't say evolution. What is the verb? What is the verb, the action? We will definitely, uh huh. La, la. What is the verb of evolution? Evolve. Exactly, exactly. Say it, please. Now give me the whole sentence. Okay. Chair, I I will definitely drive your car. <laughs> okay. Nice. I like your confidence. I will definitely drive your car. <laughs> Very good. Okay. What other examples, guys? Give me more examples. Me teacher. Uh -huh. I I have never gone to the United United States. I have never gone to the United States. Good. You're using never as a verb of certainty, and that's expressing like hundred percent of confidence because you've never been to that place. Okay, I like it. Um, Nelsie says I possibly. I think I possibly. Uh, come back to come back to the university or if you are at the university okay you can say that okay nice you heard that if that is for real it's good to hear that maybe i will go to the beach this weekend nice breeze if that is an example or if it is true man that's cool i live near the costa you know i live near so I can, it's really cool to go to the beach. Uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am from Sonsonate, so by Acajutla, oh. you know, it's really, I'm, I'm, I, I live around here, so it's, it's okay. really, really close. Uh, this example is the best one. Sorry, my internet connection is, I know it's not an example. No problem. Thank you for reporting, Nelsi. Appreciate it. Is there any other example you want to share with these structures? 
the what, what is the pronunciation the perhaps perhaps which one did you say oh perhaps per, per, perhaps the, yeah this h has a sound like like j sound like this perhaps exactly like okay. per, perhaps uh, i i one, one example perhaps these vacations i will go to guatemala nice sounds like a plan <laughs> Perhaps politics is the only profession for which no preparation is necessary. <laughs> right. Especially in El Salvador. <laughs> right. Uh, especially here. Yeah, this is so, I would say, so bad. I mean, why don't we have people who are prepared in the, you know, these positions? If, if you can see, maybe we have people with other careers, like... Uh, that they don't have to do with politics. Uh, so that's really, really sad. But then El Salvador, you know, welcome to El Salvador. Let's, <laughs> let's move on. We have more uh, chances to, to practice. So let me change slide. Uh, look at this one. What about um, this one? Look, can, can you read please the first one, Julio? Sure. I will never give up on my dream. Hey, can you change the level of degree or, or the possibility here? Can you change uh, this one, the Albert? Can I you change the meaning? Uh -huh, I will. I will never give up mm -hmm. on my dream. Okay. If you, let's say, were or ask to change the meaning of the sentence by changing this adverb, which one would you place? Instead of never, what else can you say? Mm, I will. Change the adverb of certainty. Is any other? It was... Surely. Okay. I will surely give up, but that is the opposite, right? If I say I will possibly, I will uh, certainly give up. You see how one advert is changing the whole meaning of the sentence? You see, only by changing this advert is either making it like certain to happen or the other way around. Okay, so that's, that is why it is very essential to use adverbs. We want to make emphasis, we want to change the degree of something. So that's why we use adverbs. That is the importance. What about the second one, Milton? Can you read the second example here? I will. Paul. I will possibly visit Australia when I am older. When I am older, okay. You're just expressing something that might happen, right? That you're not convinced that this can happen. What about, remember the level of certainty. What about number three, Nubia? Would you like reading please for us? They? They surely recon, recon, what is the pronunciation? Recognize. 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 They surely okay. recognize her talent. Okay, very good. Next okay. one, let's see, uh, Heidi. Okay, teacher. She is probably playing football for a team. Awesome, good pronunciation. And last but not least, let, let me ask Nelsie. Nelsie, we? We definitely love watching awesome very good as you can see these examples are on the same way we have first um adverb and then the main verb basically that will be our general rule now let's keep going let's keep going let's keep sure. practicing yes sure. go ahead a question yes. is it is a is a rule a is a other next a uh, a bear is, yes is, Let, Yes. yes. Exactly. Yes. Okay. That's that is like academically speaking, 
it's mandatory that we have the ad, the adverb before the main verb. Why? The question is why? Because an adverb, as I said yesterday, is modifying, is making an emphasis, is changing the meaning of the action. That is why it has to go just before the, the main verb. But we already mentioned that, that there are some adverbs that can be used at the beginning, right? And we already provided two examples, which are perhaps and maybe only these two ones as of now. But then um, the general rule says before the main verb. Okay, so keep that in mind. That will help us to speak uh, clearer and more understandable. Let's keep okay. practice, okay? Look at this one. Modal verbs are placed before the verb they are modifying, okay? This is another thing. Now we're going to move on to modal verbs, okay? Modal verbs, do you remember the ones we mentioned at the beginning? Should. What Should, else? Should, can. Can, uh-huh. Could. Could, okay. What others do you know? Out. Out to. Must. Okay. Must. Okay, very good. So if we have to compare here, we can see modal verbs also go before the verb they are modifying. You should drive. I can only say you drive, but then if I add you should drive, I am modifying this verb. That is why modal verbs are also placed just before the main verb they are modifying. And it is mandatory to use the base form, okay? So the only the only time we use to is we ought to, this one, ought to, which is used to express obligation, but then ought to is the only modal verse that uses to. All the other ones use the base form of the verb without adding to. So we do not say I should to drive. No, we say I should drive. We do not say, I must to have, never. We only say I must have, okay? Keep that in mind because only we ought to, which is not that common, is use the to in the middle or before the verb, okay? Like we're seeing here, okay? So um, let's keep going because there are more examples that I want to share and we don't have much time. Look at this one. If we want to talk about um, degrees of certainty, which is today's topic, we have three sentences here, okay? I might win the race. I will win the race. I may win the race. Three sentences, which one is more certain? Which is the most certain? According to this one, what do you think? Might, will, or may? Because the three ones express certainty. Will. Will, we have the little flag right there indicating, right? So it's will, <laughs> it's will. So basically, if I say I might, I might win the race, the level of certainty is little. May, it increases, but not like will. Will is more probably something to happen, okay? So basically, this is what I wanted to share. Now, I want you to Give me some example with modal verbs. You can use this one that indicates certainty or you can use any in general. Yes, go ahead. Sorry, uh, what is the difference between my and will? I don't hear that. Okay, if uh, the basic explanation I can give you is the following, it's only level of certainty. It's only the degree of certainty. What does it mean that when I use might, the probabilities is less. If I use will, the probability about something to happen is higher. Okay, that would be it. Because if I if I want to translate that, then I, I might give you a translation which will provide that intention. But then in general, what I should have clear in my mind is might expresses uh, less level of certainty than will. Will. If I use will, it's because I am more convinced that this is going to happen because um, there's no other way to translate this. Why? Because might and will, they don't have a translation by themselves. We cannot translate a modal verse. 
they are only helping or modifying the main verb, okay? Might, will, may themselves don't have any meaning. They're just neutral. They're modifying something. And we can study maybe uh, in other uh, times we can study how we can classify them because some might say, hey, but we use may when we want to ask for permission. And I will say yes, because may also is used to ask permission, which means uh, that's why we say, may I go to the bathroom, please? Because may is also used for expressing permission. So my best uh, tip is do not translate models, only focus where they are used and how we can use them. This scenario is about certainty. So you have to say, okay, I will, if I'm not sure, I, well, I'm, I want to use might. You're not sure. But if I'm sure, I want to use will because it's more, there are more probabilities that this is going to happen, like that. So that's, that would be basically what I wanted to say. Now, um, give me one example, each one, because this is the final like idea I wanted to share. But before we go over this like summary, Give me some example with um, modal verbs, please. We have this category, and this is basically the summary. Albers, uh, I'm sorry, models of certainty, might, would, will, shall, and may. Models of obligation, all or ought to, should, and must. Ability, can or could. Okay, now give me some examples, please. I will try to cook, to cook uh, lasagna tomorrow. <laughs> okay. To cook. I, yeah. I, will, I will try. I will try. I will try. So, we'll cook. try. We'll try to cook. Good. The, the verb and the, the modal verb is would plus try. I will try. Certainty. You're not mm. that. But if you know that this activity is going to happen, maybe you want to use other model of certainty. If you are more convinced, if, if you're certain this is going to happen. Any other bird, any other action, any other sentence you want to give? You must study for your exam. <laughs> okay, that is obligation, right? You must study. I know that if Julio says to me, Hey, you should study. I know it's an obligation, but when it comes to how strong this action or this sentence is, I would say, mm, he's just saying it because it's like a recommendation for me. But if Julio says you must study, I have no options, okay? For me, it's, uh, it's mandatory, okay? So that's the way how we have to picture this modal verse the level, the degree each one has, okay? And where we can use them. Obligation, we have this one. Certainty, we have this one. Ability, we have this one, okay? Is there any other example you want to share? Teacher, I have a question. And yes. the obligation is not included, have to. Yeah, yeah, good question. Have to is also included here. Have to, why isn't it, isn't it here? Why is it included here? Because have to requires an auxiliary, which is do and does to make, uh, to make it negative or to make it, or to make questions, okay? But have to, if we want to make a comparison between have to, I would say have to and must are like very similar synonyms. Must and have to, obligations. Okay, but have to like a model is not is not included. Have to most of the time is study separately. Okay, as a as an only uh, verb. That's why we study have to. When we study have to, we don't include uh, all these other modal verbs. We study have to by itself, but then we have to have clear that have to also uh, expresses obligation because. And, and when you want to give an order to someone, when you want to say, do this or do that, we say, have to, you have to do it. You have to do that. She has to, or do you have to, do I have to do this and blah, blah, blah. So yes, have to goes same level of obligation with must. Okay, 
Any other okay. question, any other example you want to uh, provide here? Because this is what you see on the video, okay? What I'm telling you at this moment, what I'm showing you at this moment, this, this is on the video you guys have watched, okay? And I wanna take this uh, five minutes to go over this one because it might be a little bit confusing, but if we pay attention to this diagram, we have a possibility here, slide, which, which means little, little possibility. And we have strong, which is a lot of possibility, all right? And this is an, uh, an arrow indicating, right? If we have this diagram and we have might, might is here. So that means that the slide, the possibility is little. Could is like here, but must is a strong possibility, okay? So if I say must, that means that this is something that is going to happen, like mandatory. And let's take a look on the other side. We have adverse, maybe little possibility. Okay, probably, possibly, like is getting to the strong possibility. And when we say definitely, it means that that thing or that something is going to happen. Like this diagram is only indicating how possible something is to happen. Okay, and then how we can use them, we have already discussed where we place others, where we place morals, after or before main verse or at the beginning of the sentence, okay? So that would be basically the picture I wanted to explain. The structure of each sentence, it's been given, how we can use them. And now if we wanna use could, my, or must, or on the other hand, we want to use maybe, possibly, perhaps, probably, definitely, it's just a matter of how certain you are about something to happen, okay? I don't know if you have questions, guys, about this topic, any example or anything that you want to add, any comments? Not teach. Let's do this, uh, because today is, for us, is Friday. Create sentences using mind, create sentences using could, create sentences using must, and also create sentences using maybe, perhaps, possibly, probably, and definitely. And then on Monday, we shared the examples. Okay, hey, I created this example with might, and then you share it. Remember the structure and that will be it, okay? I think it's time, guys. Uh, well, we have one or two more minutes. I think if you have any question, please raise your hand. If you don't have any questions, I will just ask you to work on these sentences for next class, okay? okay. All right, so thank then you, thank you so much, guys. Please watch the videos, complete the exercises on the platform and, and take care. Please, uh, if you have time, connect to the classes. Now I only see a couple of you connected, but then maybe it's due to activities or work responsibilities, which is understandable. Uh, have a nice night and nice weekend, my dear. Take care. Enjoy Thank your you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye, guys. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye, good night.